by the way, just to digress a little bit, but staying on, staying on the scene at uh, another production issue, okay, that you'll have to deal with, right? We're filming and uh, we're running out of light, okay? We're shooting this movie in October and the days are short, er, right? So uh, one of the angles that John wants, and you'll see that in the movie, is it's a raking angle, so we're shooting across. The camera is here looking at me, right? The first person in the frame is Irene, right? And the second person is Dominic, and Dominic's turning towards Irene so you can see him, right? That's the shot. Now the shot widens behind them, obviously. Behind them is the, Brook, is, uh, is the uh, Manhattan Bridge, okay? Which is, you know, a bridge, right? Well, they happen to, they happen to um, call that, um, that phenomenon, they happen to call this necklace lighting, which is appropriate, don't you think? It's kind of a cool name. During the take of Dominic's close-up, right, who's somewhere here, right? You see this in the background, right? Suddenly, the lights go on. They're not in the master, okay? That's a problem. Not for the, it's a problem for the DP, okay? So he says, um, we lost the light and the lights went on, so we have to come back. Uh, right? We're never coming back here, right? That's where you go, uh. So we have to, so I have to scramble to try and get back there to do the shot. And we do it, okay? Not without costs, but we do it. Now when you see the movie, you'll see the necklace lighting on, even though we did it with the lights off. Okay? Anyone have any idea why we, we would have had the, the lights on, even though it doesn't match the master? Continuity? No, they're both in continuity. In fact, this is out of continuity. The lights are on. In the, in the master, they're off. So why wouldn't we use the shot where they're off, the, the, the closer shot or the two shot? More interesting with them Close. More realistic. No, but close. It's a better take, a better performance. And at the end of the day, any, any director worth his salt is going to go for the best take. And the audience will forgive this, but the DPs, they tend to be more Capricorns and Virgos and shit, you know, right? <laughs> So they, they, ah, you know, we got to come back. Content takes precedence over form. Totally, totally. So that's why you see that happen. So I go, uh. now, when it happens to you, right, don't believe the DP, right, because they just want to, keep in mind that DPs are doing, they're doing two jobs at one time. They're shooting your movie, and they're also shooting their reel, okay, for future movies. They have two, two, two agendas there. Any DP is doing that, right? So they'll, wanna, they'll just keep, keep asking and asking and asking until you say no, right? In this case, I lost, okay? Uh, but but, I, but I, what I did say is I, I want to, I and everyone else wants to see, because when I'm speaking there as the production manager, I'm speaking, just I haven't been speaking for the producer, right, but also speaking for the studio. They want to see the film first, because a lot of times DPs will tell you we lost the light, it's no good. Turns out it was just fine. Develop and look at your film. Then if it's too dark, go and reshoot, but never go with just his opinion or hers. They're just not coded that way. They all just want and want and want. And I, if I were a DP, I'd do the same thing, all right? But there are times when you're gonna butt heads with a DP, all right? And, uh, and while we're on that subject, we'll just, we'll just talk about that for a moment, which is uh, in one of the production meetings, uh, the, the, the DP had this idea that here's the scene. It's the scene where Jack is taking, he's got Filarji in the van Right? And he's taking him back to Manhattan from New Jersey. Right? They've gotten what they needed by kidnapping him. And now they're, they're not, they don't want to kill him. They don't need to kill him. There's no point in killing him. So they're bringing him back. Right? So they're going to cross the bridge from New Jersey to New York. Now, no, the bridge that we happened to use was we used because it was the best looking bridge for John Houston. It didn't go to New Jersey. But America doesn't know that. You follow? That's all fine. 
audiences will forget, they don't know, right? But Andre wanted to do a dolly shot, okay? Right, of the van driving, okay. That's no big deal, right? That's reasonable. You would presume when he said dolly shot, he meant on a dolly, right? No. He wanted to do a dolly shot from a helicopter. I don't got a helicopter. As in, I don't got the money for a helicopter, right? So now we're, we're equal forces going at each other, right? So you do the best you can. So you turn to the director, right? And I said, John, tell me something. T t tell me if I'm missing something here. Isn't the story point that Jack is going from New Jersey to, um, to New York, right? That's all it is, right? That's the story point. He said, yeah, that is. That's all it is. I said, do you need to see Jack? He said, not necessarily. I said, well then, maybe the dolly shot isn't necessary, but we still need to show the van going from there to there. Maybe there's another, a better way to do that, because I don't have a helicopter. We're already $475,000 in the hole on this movie. We haven't started shooting yet, right? And Houston relates to that, right? He doesn't want to know about it a lot, but he, if you tell him, that's it, and he respects that, just as you respect him. So I said, I, I said, so maybe there's, a, maybe there's another idea. So he said, so he mentions a painting, which I happen to know. And it's a, it, there was a number of paintings done in the 40s of bridges, okay, of New York. And they're very graphic, they're beautiful graphic paintings. And it happens to be that shot from the top of one of these things, right, and it's looking this way. And it's this angle, where the, where the cabling goes like that to the, to the other side, to New Jersey. Do you follow? And it's all this interesting cable. So it's all foreshortened. It's a great graphic, right? So, so I knew the painting, right? So I said, so I mentioned, I says, I'm, I, if I got the right picture? He goes, that's exactly what I got. So he says, can you get me up here? And all I need to see is the car coming at us with all that great cabling, right? It's a beauty shot. Tells the story much better than than a dolly shot in a helicopter, plus I can't fly a helicopter that close to that bridge, right? Plus something else, and I said to, to turn to the DP, who you notice I haven't mentioned his name, right? But he's just, he's like a lot of DPs, they just, you know, they're gonna try anything, right? Uh, he, um, I said, correct me if I'm wrong, but we've got all that cabling this way, isn't that gonna strobe? So that we're gonna make the audience ill, right? You know what strobing is, right? We all know it's when the wagon wheels go in reverse. That's going to happen from all those verticals. And so he doesn't answer, which means he answered, yeah. <laughs> right? So we forget that idea and we do the shot. Now, he says, can you get there? Get me up there. I said, sure. I had no idea whether I could get him up there. Right? But I do know that somebody gets up there to paint that bridge. Right? Again, you take, take, to, take to, the, to, the, to your job your experience. There's a logic there, right? There's a, there's, a, there's a staircase in there, right? I also know that John used to me says, well, can you get me up there? He doesn't mean me personally. He means a camera, right? So I do the work, which is to get the clearances to get up there. And I managed to succeed, fortunately. Uh, so we take uh, the, uh, a grip to carry the camera, the camera operator, and one first assistant to pull focus. Okay, now, this, again, everything is money somehow, right? That means that they get hazard pay because they're in harm's way. At, at that time in our movie in 1984, that was 60 bucks a person. So that's another $180 between the three guys. That's all reasonable. But this happens to be a movie where we shoot half of it in, in, L, in New York and half of it in LA. So we have people from LA in New York so there's two grips on this, uh, two key grips on the movie in New York, right? Just the key grip. Then all the other grips are all New Yorkers, right? This happens to be the key grip from New York up here. And so the, the again, crews will ask whatever they can, you know, they, they'll ask for everything. You just have to figure out how to say no, right? Without being Dr. No, okay? 
the new the California grip, key grip, he wants 60 bucks as well. And he never left the ground. So I'm giving you an idea of what will be asked of you. No. <laughs> yeah, but he's getting, no. Okay? But anyway, so that's how we got that beautiful graphic shot. Okay, no helicopter. Uh, I, I'm sure it damaged my relationship with, with, aunt, with uh, the DP. Okay, but I, I'll handle that. So will he, you know. At the end of the day, I'm sure, I'm sure that at the end of the movie, there was, in fact, he was, we were fine at the end of the movie. But um, that was something he asked for. And then you had to say no. But here, you had to say no, but you had to have a solution. In this case, I didn't have a solution, but I had an idea. No, have you got an idea? I mean, the director. And he said, yeah, and he said, yeah, can you get me up there? So you see how there's a flow? People, creative, positive, and the flow is forward. At the end of the day, you got a better shot. So that's what you, you, you have an opportunity to do the same in your movie. The opening scene in the church, right? Now that's St. Anne's Church. It's a real church in Brooklyn, New York. It is also a historical monument, okay? It's on the historical registry, right? He wants to put a sky cam in there. Do you know what a sky cam is? You know what a steady cam is, right? Okay. The same inventor, Garrett Brown, invented the sky cam thing. And what it is basically, it's a camera on, on two guy wires. It's two, you know, so what you do is you, you drill a hole in the corner of the, of the room, right? Corner of the room, and you string a cable from that corner to this corner and then another one from that corner to that corner, right? And this camera, I don't know, the, I, I won't bother to explain all the intricacies of how it works, but the camera is remotely operated and it moves, okay, to get you these unique high angles. It's used for and designed for football games. This is inside a church. No, it, I forget the number, it's ridiculously expensive to rent that thing per day. You only need it for a day, but it's ridiculous. Plus, you can't put eyeballs in, in, into the 200-year-old oak lumber that's in those corners, right? So you have to have a better, you, it's no, but you have to have a good reason. We wind up with, we start in the rose window, remember, in the movie? We pull off the rose w window, and the first thing we see after we see the, the rose window and then the stained glass window, we see the altar, we see the bishop, the altar boys, right? Everybody in attendance because mob weddings will get all, it will get every Roman Catholic to turn out, okay? Okay, for whatever reason, I'll leave it to you why they turn out, for, right? I mean the hierarchy, the, the religious hierarchy, right? So um, there's lots of envelopes being passed around. <laughs> you know? Um, if they were Chinese, it would be red envelopes because that says it's got money in it, you see? I don't know what color the mafia uses. But anyway, we pull back from that and then we reveal the wedding couple and then we pull back and we reveal the, um, uh, the other dignitaries. Then we go on the other side of the balustrade and then we begin to reveal all the people in, in, in there. And one of the jokes in this movie is that there's a whole section of policemen in uniform at a mob wedding. There's a joke there, okay? And then at some point, you see Jack. Remember, he relates to, he spots Irene right for the first time, and who is that girl? Okay, well, what was very shot, shot specific is that John did not want a raking angle. He wanted to be able to come right off the rose window and straight up the aisle. Now, mind you, in a Catholic church, you have to know, by the way, what, how to stage a Jewish wedding, a Catholic wedding, a Muslim wedding. That's your job as an AD. If you don't know how, you go, you find out how, right? So you, he wanted to come straight back. Well, what's going to happen? What are you going to see when you go straight back? Straight back, not on an angle. You're going to see the dolly track, right? Now, I, fortunately, in a Catholic wedding, they have what's called a train which is, a, which is a linen cloth that is run, it's a runner that goes down there. And the whole idea is, I'm sure there's some um, metaphorical reason for this, that it's, there's no footprints on it. It's not been walked on. The bride is the first one, right? And it's no accident that it's white as in purity. There's a joke there, all right? So they have to walk, walk down this. Now what we're gonna do, right, is we're gonna fly that. 
And how we do that, what we mean by that is that uh, under the camera, right, you've got, the, you've got the, um, the, the, the camera crane. It happened to be a Luma crane, which is an indoor crane. What it is, is it, it, it's an extension arm, right? At the end of the arm is the camera, but it's rem it is um, um, operated off a TV screen with the handles, right, right, on the ground. So that's in the back of the church where John is. So he's watching this thing, and the operator is actually moving it, right? So we're pulling back. In front of the dolly track, picture this is the dolly track. Here's the camera, right? Here's the crane, and the arm is this way. Here's the altar. All right, are you with me? Here's the, here's the dolly, here's the altar. We're this way, we're coming off of this, right? We're coming, panning down, right? And then we're beginning to move, okay? This is where we reveal everything. Well, right here are two set dressers, right? And they've got a long pole and this big bolt of white linen fabric. And as the camera moves, they're rolling with it. And that's what they do with carpet, that was called flying, okay? They're rolling out the linen. It's kind of cool watch. Problem, there are grips stepping on all this stuff, okay? Because we're doing multiple takes and we're not even ready for the first take and there's footprints on it, which is a story point. You can't wash linen instantly. Then again, you have an opportunity, right? I grew up in an era, an era when they had window shade, okay? You had curtains with valances, right? And then you had a window shade. Remember with a string pull, right? So I turned to the set decorator and I said, is there, can, I know what we could would make would work, okay? Which is if we could find a bolt of window shade, a long bolt, 100 feet, right? Probably only 50 feet would work, right? And we'll fly the we'll fly the window shade. Why? Because it's got a laminate one. So when the grip steps on it, you can wash the footprint off for the next take. And two, it happens to be an off white like what I'm wearing today, which is off white because the camera doesn't like white. So it's actually teched. It's what we call teching it. So we have a built-in tech, washable material. Your idea, in this case, my idea, right? He ran to the store, they have, it was Brooklyn. There are places like that, that I'm far, far away, where they make window shades. He bought one, we were back here, and it was in time for all, for the, for the shot. Okay, so that's your idea, that's an opportunity for you to contribute, like this is an opportunity to contribute having a better idea. So, you, so you, 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 um, as an AD and as a production manager and as a producer, all three, you use your past experience. It informs on, the, on your present. Use it. Remember the historic church? Just one more. Okay, so we're, going to talk, we're talking about Pritzi Zana, which is the core of this course. Remember the, uh, the historic church where you can't do anything, right? Because it's a historic building, right? So I get a, requ I get a request, right? Can we cut the pew? Okay, and they don't even use like nice saws. They use a chainsaw, right? And I, no, <laughs> this is a historic building, you know? It isn't about the money, it's irreplaceable. You cannot cut the pew. They cut the pew. They waited till I left to go do something. And then they cut the pew. And then they put it back. And then the scenic artist, puts in the putty, right, and matches the grain. So you'd never, when you look at it, you wouldn't know that the chainsaw had cut this in half and then we did the shot. Because why did they cut the pew? Because it was in the way of the camera platform. Right, it's like, you know, when the telephone pole's in the way, you cut the, tel you know, but you don't. They actually did it, okay? So then they put it back. I know nothing about it, okay? I get a call a week later. The um, chaplain, knows movies, <laughs> and he checked that there wasn't any damage. So we had a significant financial issue there, right? We had to make a new pew, exactly like that. So, you see, just life. Something like that happens to the production budget thing, or do you charge that to the guy that... No, the you, production budget takes it. Yeah. yeah, so you gotta find the money for that. Right. So life is interesting and challenging all the time. So, so much for that historic monument. All right, get, getting back to this now. So you see how it flows? Okay, there are ideas, so I'm gonna share them with you and then you will come back and finish it up.